Praise the Lord, everyone. Give it a sec. Give it a sec. All right, tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I say praise the Lord again, everyone. Let us all prepare our hearts to go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. Let us remember uh, Sister Christina. Pray, keep praying for her healing. Amen. She's uh, on oxygen again. Amen. Also, please pray for Sister Virginia Reed. Pray for her healing. She has a blood clot, and it is painful, and she might have to go to the hospital. And this is a prayer request submitted by Sister Patty. Amen. Also, remember Israel Wogu. Amen. And also, remember Sister Wogu's uh, son, James McCondy, James McCondy she. And let us also remember Sister Vicki Harris's husband, John Harris. We're continuing praying for his. We're continually praying for his healing and for his salvation. So if that be all the prayer requests, let us all bow our heads and go before the Lord in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for you, Lord, to come before your throne of grace, Lord, to receive mercy and help. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for blessing us, Lord Jesus, to wake up this morning clothed in our right minds with a reasonable portion of health and strength, Lord, with a mind and a desire to press our way out to this gathering, Lord. Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for blessing us, Lord, to gather together in your spirit, Lord Jesus. Yes. Lord, you said in your word where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there, there I am in the midst. Lord, touch right now according to your will, Lord Jesus. Lord, I want to ask, Lord, to look upon all these prayer requests that have been submitted before you, Lord. Yes. Lord, move in every one of them according to your will, Lord. Touch everybody that needs to be touched right now. Heal everybody that needs to be healed. For you said in your word, by your stripes, we are healed. Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for the word that we're about to receive. Lord, prepare our hearts Amen. to receive your word. Let your word fall upon good ground and take root in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
How many of y'all know that he worked it out? How many of y'all know why you were still trying to figure it out? Jesus did already worked it out. Everybody wondering what the act is. Everybody wondering what the situation is. But I'm here to tell you this morning, Jesus did already worked it out. We're going to be all right. Amen. At this time, we're going to have to prepare our hearts to give. Amen. And while we're preparing our hearts to give, I have a few quick announcements. Amen. Uh, we have, we'll be having services. The church will be having services uh, next Sunday and Wednesday, starting Wednesday inside the building. Now, we'll be practicing social distancing. Amen. That means uh, that every, every six feet apart, that means uh, your family have a pew, and then uh, you skip a pew and have the next pew. Also, be sure you wear your mask. And when you come into church, sanitize your hands. Amen. Amen. Also, before services, the ministers will be disinfected. Amen. So remember that'll be next Sunday where the church will be the church doors will be open again and we'll be having services inside. Amen. Amen. So if, if that be all the announcements, let us all bow our heads and pray. Oh, excuse me. And also I'd like to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day this morning. Amen. 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 So at this time, we'd like to, uh, to bless the offering right now. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to give it to your kingdom. Lord, we ask you to bless all those to give, bless how they desire to give. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Mother's Day. <laughs> Amen. God bless every one of you. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. And uh, just just by way of Thanksgiving, uh, I, I just want to say we're thankful. Amen. For everybody that keeps coming out. Uh, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if we're not hearing the word of God, then we're not going to be saved. Amen. We want to be saved. How many want to be saved? Wave your hand if you want to be saved. Amen. And so I thank God for our pastor as he leads and guides us through a time that, you know, the church probably had never seen something like this before. But God has given us a good man and he's led us through. Amen. And we're still going through, ain't we? But we're going to the other side. Isn't that right? That's right. Praise God. Amen. Well, I'm going to get out of the way. Amen. For you mothers, we will have something for you as you're leaving. We'll have something over there at the gate where we'll give something to you as you're going out. Praise God. But we're looking forward to getting back to the house of God, worshiping together inside the house, seeing the move of God. How many of you are looking forward to that time? Amen. Praise God. Amen. God is doing great things. Miracles are happening. And we're believing the Lord, amen, to do greater things, amen. If you believe this, your best is yet to come. Would you Amen, amen. Our best is yet to come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Sister Morrison, we're going to ask you to get back out of the car. <laughs> um, 
We want to show our appreciation and our love for you. You've done so much for each and every one of us, and we thank you for that. We honor you, we bless you, and we say Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, thank you. She Happy says Mother's thank you, you can't hear her. Amen. Somebody say, thank the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. As we transition one more time. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Let's lift our voices. I know you're honking your horn. You can honk your horn, but lift your voice with that honk. Come on. Would you do that? Amen. Lift your voice with that honk. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. God's going to give us a word, and that word going to change our lives today. Amen. I believe that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. This morning's uh, scripture text will be coming from Romans, excuse me, Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and the 19th verse. Amen. It says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, which entereth into the, to that which, which within the veil. Yeah. And also, Romans, the 15th chapter, and the 13th verse. It says, Now that God, now the God of hope, fill you with all joy and peace, and believing that ye may abound in hope, be, be abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that will be our scripture reading. Let us ponder that while we go forth in our last song. In times like these, we need.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's such an honor, amen, to actually speak today on this special occasion, Mother's Day. Amen. And, uh, my mother's back there on the East Coast, and and, I, and now I have some folks back there tuning in. But I want to preach the Word of God. Yes, sir. Because we need a Savior. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yes. Amen. Amen. It's a must. Uh huh. We need a Savior. Uh huh. Oh yes. I want to speak to us on this subject. An anchor All right. of the soul. All right. All right. In early history, in ancient times, the anchor was viewed as a symbol that represented safety. Mm -hmm. Because of this, Christians adopt the anchor as a symbol of hope. Yes, sir. A symbol of hope. An anchor. Many times we hear people saying, my situation is hopeless. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. They feel as if they're looking down a long dark tunnel uh -huh. with no way out. I've been there. I've been there a few times. Looking and staring down that dark tunnel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you're honest, you probably have experienced something that appeared to be hopeless in your life. It's something about actually living for God in this world or this living period yes, you're going to experience what we call hopeless situation yes, sir. Amen. I wish that all of us could just be hanging off the chandeliers all yes, the time yes, yes. but that's not being real all right. there are times that we are presented with hardships, yes, aches and pain even in our bodies. Yes, but I got an anchor. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. But I got an anchor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I got, come on, I got an anchor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I heard those of us who believe in Jesus Christ. Uh -huh and been born again of the water and of the spirit, there's no such thing as a hopeless situation. Right. I remember, recall some years ago when I was facing what appeared to be a, a hopeless situation. I had recently got saved Repented of my sins, got baptized in his name, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I was on my way to prison. I was looking down a dark tunnel. I was looking at a hopeless situation. You see, at the time, I didn't realize what an anchor was. But I know that. Yes, sir. Because he brought me out. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. yes, sir. It was the anchor of hope uh -huh. oh, yeah. that picked me up out of the muck and the mire with clay. Uh -huh. 
and establish my going. Praise God. Although we experience pain sometimes. Yes, we do. And difficulties. Amen. And confusion. We have an anchor yes, sir. of hope. Yes, sir. That actually keep us from drifting in despair. Yes, sir. Somebody thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for that anchor, Jesus. Hebrews 6 and 19 calls this anchor both sure, All right. steadfast, yes, which will mean our hope is certain yes, sir. and provides stability uh -huh. even when the harshest wind of adversity blows our way. There are times that we are going to be confronted with adversity. Yeah. Like this situation that we're facing in our world right now. Right now. But my anchor. My anchor. But my anchor. My anchor. My anchor is in Jesus Christ. The basis of our confidence is found in the preceding verse where the writer actually described unchanged nature, unfailing commitment, and fulfilling love. I can shout unto that. I unto the Lord. There are times like these that we need encouragement. And if we have the anchor, the anchor will provide the encouragement which we need. He then encouraged us to lay hold of it. There are so many promises in the scripture that the Lord wants us to desire and to see fulfilled. Yes, sir. I'm talking about revival. Yes, sir. Revival in this end times. Yes, sir. Revival in this situation which we're in right now. Yes, sir. And the doors are going to be open. And I believe this is a time for a great revival yes, because he is the anchor of my soul. But to do so, but to do so, we need patience, perseverance, and a focus on the Lord. This is not a time to give in or to give up. This is a time to stand tall for Jesus in these evil times which we are facing. As we consecrate on God's courage and promises, we'll remember that he always works situations out for our good, even when we don't understand right. how so, whether we face an uncertainty yes. or an uncertain outcome. He is always Yes, he is. He's always faithful. Yes, he is. We need to stand firm in this hour in which we live in. Stand firm in the mercy and the grace of God. He's an anchor. He's a present anchor. He's an anchor for my soul. Although early believers suffered much persecution. They endured with hope. It's nothing like hope unless the anchor are dropped into the sea. They are useless. In the same way, we must take hold 
of hope, the hope of God that will provide us with whatever we need. He's an anchor. But when we focus on our troubles, we toss about without foundation. When we focus on our trouble, this is not the time to focus on our trouble. There's a story in the Bible about a man called Apostle Paul. He was persecuted. Yes. The Christian. But while he was on the road of the masses, the anchor of my soul met him. Go ahead. And he revealed himself Go ahead. to Apostle Paul. Uh -huh. And Apostle Paul was converted. He repented of his sins. He was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking other tongues. And through his life, he experienced adversity. But he made up in his mind, he made up his mind. that he was not going to focus on the trouble. He was thrown in prison and he wrote an epistle and it sounded like he was in a palace. That's right. And the reason, because his anchor was in Jesus Christ. He had taken us through the storm. Yes, sir. But we must understand not to focus on the trouble. So we can be tossed without a firm foundation. Even when times are hard, focus on that hope in Jesus. Because he knows how to pick us up. He knows how to bless us. While it's good to have aspirations mm -hmm. and dreams in this life, we must remember where our hope ultimately lies until we are in God's eternal presence. We must grasp our anchor of hope and stay focused on the one who always hold us steady. And that is Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. He's the anchor of my soul. Yes, sir. Would you worship him right now? Oh, if he's your anchor. Oh, oh he's the anchor. Oh, he's the anchor. Yeah. While I was stirring down this dark tunnel, after being converted, my commanding officer met me coming out the basement. He made this statement. He says, there's light right. at the end of the tunnel. Right. It may look dark now. Amen. And we may not understand all what's going on right now. But I'm going to tell you, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Will you praise the Lord right now? This life. I want us to take time. I need that. I want us to take time for a moment to turn to that anchor right now. Would you bow your head? Let's pray. Lord, we enter into your presence. Yes. This morning with thanksgiving. Yes, Lord. We give you honor this morning. 